Hi everyone, this is Radu live. So glad you could join us again this Saturday afternoon. And uh, yeah, Arsenal's still on top. Um, but today we're going to talk about CrossFit. And I have a team here from uh, First Power, but not just from First Power. These are the guys who brought CrossFit to Kenya. Allow me to introduce Brian Swenson, who's the team coach, and uh, Collins Mande, team captain. Yeah. Capitani. Yeah, Capitan. <laughs> Brian, let me start with you. Um, mm. CrossFit, still a new uh, sport here in Kenya. Tell me about your CrossFit journey, how you got into it and what made you think, oh, let me take it to Kenya. Sure. Yeah, I started CrossFit back in 2007, back in the US. Um, at that time, it was still a really new sport, even back there. Oh. And um, I, I got really passionate about it. I got into it because I was into adventure racing. And um, where I was living at the time, we were um, snowed in. So in the wintertime, it got, got really cold. And I needed a place to train. And so I wanted something more unique to do in the gym that wasn't just lifting weights or, or running on a treadmill, but something that blended everything together. And um, I came across CrossFit and started to do it on my own and, and fell in love with it. And a year later, I was certified as a coach, opened up a gym, and um, that was the beginning of my, my CrossFit journey, both as an athlete and as a gym owner. And somewhere along the way, you thought Kenya? Yeah, so I, I, I owned and operated a gym in the US for almost 10 years and um, had some friends who had lived here for a number of years and they were talking to us about Kenya and about Nairobi and we got really intrigued and thought it'd be, I don't know, a, a next step, a unique opportunity. So um, came out here a little bit in 2012, 2013 to, to check it out and then decided in 2016 to sell the business and to move out here. Um, at that time, um, there was only, I believe, one or two other CrossFit boxes. I, um, CrossFit Kwetu is actually the first CrossFit gym here in, in uh, Nairobi in Kenya. And I think um, the dip station was another CrossFit. And so we came in, wanted to join the community. Um, the most important thing for me in, in this is just bringing the sport here. Um, I see this as uh, a place where it's, it's developing, just like it was 10, 15 years ago in the U.S. It's developing now and we're seeing athletes getting really excited about it and wanting to put effort forth, um, you know, to be the best they can be and to compete not just here in Kenya, but, but internationally as well. And we'll get into that competition in just a bit. By the way, a couple mm. of weeks ago, I was at uh, the first power where you're hosting, I think, fittest in Nairobi. My yeah. goodness gracious <laughs> me. Just when, I was thought, just when I was thinking I should start CrossFit, you, you almost put me up. <laughs> it's it so yeah. hard. Uh, let me bring Collins Monday into the conversation. Collins, yeah. you are a footballer. Yes, I am. I, I was. Uh, I was. Are you dumped us? <laughs> Football is the love of my life. What made you transition? It is. Um, uh, yeah, I played soccer since I was uh, nine. Um, started in Jericho. Then um, uh, at the 12. Helm of football. Oh, the helm of football, <laughs> yes. At 12, 13, 14, and 15 years, played for Madari Youth. And then uh, moved to Western, where I continued again with my football in Vihiga. Came back. Joined Jerry Call Stars from there, went to Santos all the way up to Mahakama. Played in Mahakama about six months, got a crazy injury, and uh, my recovery wasn't just um, allowing me to continue with, uh, with soccer. So I would play a game, and my knee would swell for almost three weeks before I recover and go back again. And so the doctors were like, It's time to call it quit. So which is really unfortunate. I'm sorry to branch a little bit to football, yes. but it's just so unfortunate that because of how we look after our athletes in this country, one injury that should be treatable in any other country yes. Yes. or in any serious country yes. uh -huh. um, ends your career. Completely. And, and I did it myself. My dad in my family is the one that took care of me. As in, mm -hmm. All I could get from the club is, are you okay? When will you be back? And so I thought, okay, it's not worth it. So... But then it means now uh, CrossFit was sort of like a savior for you. Tell me about your transition. So I, transi I, I left soccer and then I just fell in love with fitness. CrossFit was not yet in Kenya by then. Mm -hmm. And so I would do all kinds of fitness. Now from there, I did a few courses. Then I moved into coaching P and sports in schools. And um, it's when I was at West Nairobi School, I got to find out about CrossFit. So I and a couple of friends, we just started doing CrossFit like, you know, YouTube, do the workout. Go to YouTube, do the workout. Then um, 
yeah and that's this guy came along this guy came along <laughs> yeah while i was doing my own things in crossfit actually funny thing is that i was coaching her daughter because the daughter was You're a coaching student his in, daughter yes his daughter sorry mm -hmm. i was coaching his daughter the daughter was a student in um the school which i was teaching and so the daughter is one who went home and told the dad there's a teacher at our school and <laughs> His P classes kind of feel like CrossFit style um, wow, class. Oh, that's nice. And yeah. so, and then by that time, I was kind of getting like, I'd already hit the wall where teaching mm -hmm. and me kind of concerned. Like, what's next? I'm like, what's next? Mm -hmm. And so, when I heard that he's planning to open a CrossFit gym, actually, the daughter's the one who told me, my dad is planning to open a, a CrossFit gym in Kenya. And at that time, I was like, okay, I'm living here, and I just want to be out and find something to do. And I, so hope, I, hope, I hope you pay your daughter for marketing. <laughs> <laughs> marketing and recruitment at this yes. stage. And so that's um, how we, we kind of connected. And yeah, um, uh, we met, and um, now the official CrossFit journey started in 2018. And I guess for CrossFit, what I see is, in terms of the equipment you use, it's a lot more friendly than a gym. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that correct? I mean, you don't have... Uh, um, it's a lot about you and your body and your yeah. strength, yeah. as opposed to mm -hmm. uh, go and lift a dozen weights. Yeah, we, we like to say that um, in, in our gym, the only machine is you. And, ah. um, you know, mm -hmm. we don't... There are some cardio machines, but for the most part, it's free weights, it's natural, functional movement. Um, it, when we're lifting weights or, or doing calisthenics or gymnastics or even Olympic weightlifting, um, it, it's all, you know, it's all based on your own technique and skill. Um, and it is, it is really friendly. It, it can take a little bit of learning and knowledge, which is why most CrossFit gyms, the coaching is really, really important. Mm -hmm. So when you go in there, it's important that you have coaches that know what they're doing, that are, that are trained and skilled so that they can teach you good form and technique and how to do it properly. Yeah. Tell me about this partnership and how you became the best or one of the best in the country in terms of competition. Wow. Um, yeah, after, like, when we started CrossFit with him, um, the first thing I remember I told him is, yes, in as much as I want to be a coach, I also want to be um, um, an athlete. athlete. I want to, to compete, compete. Um, in, in CrossFit. And... Um, so I remember one thing he told me is like until the day you do these workouts and you're able to beat like CrossFit workouts have a time cap. Like you have to finish the workout in a certain time or do as many rounds uh, within a given time. Mm -hmm. And so he told me about, okay, well, the day you will start killing these workouts and finishing them within the time cap and, and these were just ordinary workouts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's it. So that was my goal. So started from there kept going, kept going, kept coaching me and encouraging me while still doubling up as a coach. And so um, with time, we got to the point that I was finishing the workouts within the time cap. I was doing the many rounds that are required in those workouts. And so I think at that point is when he told me, okay, now I think you're set you're, to- You're ready mm, for competition. You're ready for competition. Yeah. Tell me about some of the competitions, uh, brands that happened here in Nairobi that have happened abroad. And of course, about how these athletes have now qualified for yeah. a championship. So we, we do a lot of local competitions and we're trying to do more. We did um, the Suli Festival. Um, of course, we have the fittest ah, in Nairobi. At, um, City, Stadium. City Stadium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did that one, I think, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, we really want to promote the sport here, get athletes interested, get them competing. Um, and then, of course, so th there are the international competitions. And those are a lot of them are based around the CrossFit Games. So the CrossFit Games is, is the world championship, right? Um, there's an open competition that begins that, and it's more virtual. So people can participate. I think they had... 400,000 participants Whoa. in the open. And so yeah. you submit videos, there's a certain criteria, you do it at an affiliated, affiliated gym, and then you get ranked. And so from that ranking, you then qualify for the sectional competitions. And the sectional competitions um, happen, like for example, in South Africa, we took a team last year to the sectional competitions there. Collins was yeah. also the team captain on that as well. And um, then there's Elfit, which is also a, a qualifying event. I don't, this particular competition is not just because the Open is, hasn't happened yet, but these events are, are really world recognized and, and they're, they're legitimate events and it's really exciting to be, be able to go. So now uh, tell me about the team that has qualified to go to Egypt. Okay, so we've got really two teams. We've got an all-male team, which has 
um, Collins and Boniface and um, Ellie on it. And uh, these guys are going, I think you're in the, what, the elite division? Yes. And so then we have another team that's going, it's a co-ed team. And you'll meet Joyce in a minute. With Joyce is coming in the second Tanya, half. Yeah, yeah, and Ron. To inspire me. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and so those guys qualified in, in a different division. Um, but it, it's not easy to qualify. I mean, it, it, it's a virtual competition, just like the Open is. And a lot of teams want to be a part of this. And, and only those that get the highest score qualify. So we're really excited about that. And uh, what do you think our chances are in these competitions, in that competition? Um, it's going to be tough. And, and one, one thing we learned, it takes time to develop CrossFit athletes. Um, CrossFit is relatively new in Kenya, as, a, as a, I would say, as a sport. Um, even though CrossFit gyms have been around for maybe 10 years, in terms of getting really competitive, I mean, athletes are really in that four to five year range. And so Collins, for example, is probably one of the the more senior athletes, not just because of your age. Um, <laughs> but, but <laughs> yes. I'm saying you have it. But because of CrossFit experience, you uh -huh. can have really good guys. I mean, you've got really talented um, uh, men and women here who are really strong, who are really fit, who've come from other sports, and they start CrossFit with a really good foundation. Um, but it takes time to develop the skills needed in gymnastics it's not just a one area focus. You have to be good, you have to be really strong, you have to be really fast, you have to be really skilled and have good technique. And so therefore, a developed CrossFit athlete is one that it, it just takes time. Um, I think here in Kenya with, with the boxes, we've only, you know, four or five years, we're competing against gyms in Egypt and South Africa and internationally who've had gyms for 10, 15 years. And so their athletes have been doing this for so much longer. Um, so we we're already on the back foot, but we're heading we're in the right yeah, direction. We're heading in the right direction. Here's one thing, having come from the States and seeing athletes in the States compared to Kenya, uh, there's a lot of raw talent here, a lot of raw talent. And the guys coming into the sport, and, and when I say guys, I mean men and women coming into the sport, are coming in with a foundation that's higher than what I've seen in the States. And so I think that the, that learning curve is going to go faster. And so I'm really excited to see where these athletes go. Our chances in, in Egypt, we're hopeful, but we also know we're going into a, a very strong competitive pool. So we'll see. How will you, sorry, I'll, I've put you on pause a little bit it's because okay. we have to let uh, yeah. Brian go at halftime so that Joyce can join us. Um, how are you going to fund these games? How do you fund generally our competitions mm -hmm. and then going for international competitions? You know, at this point, um, we're looking to raise funds. We have, we have an Mchanga account. I mean, it isn't cheap to fly people out of the country and to take a team, especially, you know, when we have six or seven individuals. Um, so we're, we're hoping to raise some money. We're trying to raise money within our gym, within the community as a whole. We're hoping to get some corporate sponsors. And so anybody out there that um, wants to be a part of this, sending, a, you know, a Kenyan team to represent in this brand new sport, um, they, can, they can give through our Mchanga account, mm -hmm. as well as, um, you know, corporates that want to get involved and get some international recognition. We'd love to, to showcase you and to, and to show that you're a part of, of this movement here in Kenya. And we'll get those details. I'll be sharing them on my social media pages. So mm. you can also support this team when they go to yeah. Egypt. You know, Kenya, we have a habit of ignoring you before you go and when you come <laughs> back with silverware suddenly <laughs> we all want to be associated <laughs> with you which yeah. i always say is back to front mm. yeah. we need to help you get there in the f in the sure. first place before we let you go brand uh mm. women and we'll talk to joyce from boy in the second half we, you have a lot of women in the gym as well mm. and how do they fare and i'm asking for myself <laughs> you know it's it's great i love the enthusiasm of the women in the gym women who are beginning to embrace strength training and fitness as something that's more than, than just, let's say, aerobics. You know, it's something that they find strength and beauty and strength. Um, Joyce is a great example of that. She loves that mantra and I, I hope she talks about it when she comes. Mm -hmm. um, it, just redefining what it is to be a woman, you know, the, and the strength that can come from that, both physically, emotionally, and, and, and in all ways. You know, just coming in and empowering people in general. Mm -hmm. Um, women have a harder time in developing in the sport. Um, one of the core components of CrossFit is gymnastics. And mm. unfortunately, gymnastics isn't as big of a thing here in Kenya with young girls. You yeah, know, it's not. In the States, um, gymnastics studios, it, it's, it's more of a sport. It's more of a recognized sport. And so a lot of women coming into CrossFit in the States have a gymnastics background. Um, a lot of women here in Kenya don't have that advantage. 
And so there's, there's a bit of a learning curve there, but, but they're overcoming it. Like I said, raw talent. There's a lot of, and, and drive and ambition. It's, it's really encouraging to see. Uh, but I'm, I'm also guessing that there's a whole group of crossfitters who don't really want to compete, just want to be mm -hmm. fit and healthy. Absolutely. Um, and I'm putting myself in that category. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because I'm quite useless in gymnastics. <laughs> um, but I guess you have a lot in your gym as well, Colin. Yes. Um, people who just come, who just want to be healthy. Yeah, general fitness, people who just want to be fit and um, just have a healthy lifestyle. And so with that, and the beauty about CrossFit is um, we modify movements based on where someone is at. So that means you and I can be in the same class doing the same thing, but you're doing it at your level, I'm doing it at my level. So to the person who can't do those extreme gymnastics movement won't feel like left out when they jump into a class that has a lot of people doing all those gymnastics movement. They still have something that they can do and feel like, okay, I'm still part of this community while we're working out together. So I mustn't feel intimidated. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. One of the things I tell people, and, and this, it, this goes like this, they walk in the gym and they see somebody like Collins working out or they watch the CrossFit games online and they think, wow, I can't do that. You know, nobody watches the World Cup and says, I can't learn football because That's I can't true. compete yeah. with those guys. That's mm -hmm. true. You know, and, and, and it's not about that. It's about playing football in the street with, with your friends or, or, or at a local field or pitch or whatever. Like, you know, that's where Pete, you can still have fun with the sport. You don't have to compete at that level. And you can learn and begin at that base level and still have a great time. What do you say to the people who say that CrossFit is just exercise, it's not a sport? Well, you know, sport is when you compete on anything. Mm -hmm. You know, ping pong is a sport. You know, um, uh, chess, you know, whatever. Like, it's chess anytime two sport. people are... We had chess, are a chess person <laughs> here. The other exactly. Yeah. You're like, anytime two people are competing in, in an event that can be measured and, and that can be, that, that requires skill and strength and fitness, I mean, of course it's a sport. You can make a sport out of anything. And they've done a great job of making a sport out of fitness. Yeah. Because it tests you on e in every capacity. Every capacity. You can't just be really fast like Kipchoge right? Mm -hmm. And you can't just be really strong like Kenyan's strongest man. Both of those guys are great athletes, but Kipchoge probably isn't very strong. And, the, and Kenyan's strongest man probably isn't very fast. But a crossfitter is in the middle. He, we want to be the guy that can be really strong and really fast and have all elements of fitness. And the fact is 80-90% of sports require you to be fit. Exactly. Physically. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so those that don't like chess, Required to be fit mentally. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. we, we are going to take a break. Do you have any parting shot before we let you go, Brian? Um, no, I just, just that we're uh, really excited. And you can tell people where to find you, First Power. Yeah, but you can find us at First Power underscore CrossFit on, on Instagram, uh, firstpowerfitness.com on, on the web. Um, you know, we're really excited about what we're, what we're doing here, both with the competitive team, but also with the gym in general. Just bringing... And, and gal Galleria. A Galleria, Galleria Mall, Mall, yeah. Will you open CrossFit around the country? For sure, for sure. It's a thought. Yeah, absolutely. First power, Kisumu, first power. Absolutely. <laughs> take it yeah. to my people by the next time. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to let Bryant go. We will be joined by Joyce Van Boy in the second half. And uh, yeah, I think I'll be more relatable to her. <laughs> Though I hear she's very, very strong. So we oh, will yes. see you just after the break.
Welcome back. This is Radu Live. I hope you're enjoying this show. Um, and I hope as soon as we finish, you're going to run off to a CrossFit gym and yeah. get fit. Uh, Very. We're still uh, with Collins Mande, the team captain of... Uh, team captain is of Kenya team or First Power Gym? First Power Gym. First Power, First Power Gym. Power. Yes. They call you team captain. That's so nice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're joined by Joyce Wamboi, who is also a CrossFitter. Are you called CrossFitters? Yes. Or CrossFit athlete? Um, Crossfitter. Crossfitter. Crossfitter cr cr sounds Crossfitters. great. Cross yeah. Crossfitters? Yes. yes. It sounds yeah. cool, huh? Yeah, it's very cool. Joyce, <laughs> how did you get into this? Well, there was a time I, I was at home and there was apparently the CrossFit Games on TV. And I saw it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then I, I Googled, at that time there was only CrossFit Kwetu and it was really far from where I live. And then years later in 2019, I found a gym that was near, and then I, I started doing CrossFit. One thing led to another. Yeah. And then but, but you've yeah. always been into keeping fit, generally. Uh, not really. I, really? I, I wasn't sporty in high school. Um, I, it's just something that I saw. I was like, oh, this is cool. I see people lifting weights. I'd love to try that, and then I just tried it. Okay, then that's more inspiring. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you told me I was always an athlete. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's beyond um, me. <laughs> I was cross country. I was the worst. It was because I used to, I used to be in school in Kagwe, mm. and we used to run in the tea plantations, and I used to dread it so much. Yeah. And n and now you do it by choice. Yes, by <laughs> choice. <laughs> yeah, it's not it. a chore. <laughs> it's not a chore now. So yeah. tell me about your CrossFit getting into competition level. Mm -hmm. um, it started with the CrossFit Open. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's something that's open to everyone, and there's always a level for you. So um, I did that, and it's great to see your name on the CrossFit website. And mm -hmm. you see, oh, I was top 12 in Kenya in the women's division. And that ended up being... Motivated. You mo mean. Motivating, yeah. And uh, I did um, something called Uzani. It's mm -hmm. uh, Olympic weightlifting, which is one of the things CrossFit we do. And um, I was top three. And then Collins convinced us to do Elfit, and it worked, and <laughs> now we're here. Collins, what do you see in someone, <laughs> uh, women in particular, that makes you think this could be a, um, a top athlete in CrossFit? Um, one, one of the things in Kenya, especially, um, women are scared of the gym because they think they'll get buffed. And so, that <laughs> yeah. yeah, so <laughs> um, we get, yeah, it's a myth actually, because they come to the yeah. gym and they have all these, um, I don't know what to call it, be like, okay, I want you to help me get rid of this, don't touch this, don't touch <laughs> this. And you're like, okay, um, that, it, it, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And so having athletes like Joyce and all the other athletes, it's, it's kind of a way of letting women know we can do it. It can be done. Most of the ladies that um, we do encourage to take part, even in local competitions, sometimes we tell them, don't go even there to win. Just go there to test yourself and, and, and see if it's something that you'd love to pursue more and continue doing. Some will go in there, they will not win, but they'll come out at least with a different um, perception about fitness and about men, um, how they need to push themselves and just the general awareness of, of, of fitness. And so having her compete even out there and coming back, whether we'll win or not, um, there's a way it will shift a lot of um, 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 ladies thinking, yeah. thinking mm -hmm. and just how they will perceive lifting weights and doing intense stuff. They're like, oh, I can still look beautiful and I can still lift heavy and I can also have a good lifestyle. So Joyce, what are you hoping to achieve when you go to the CrossFit Games? Not necessarily in terms of a trophy. Uh, just to have fun. And this, it's, it's not only to compete, but I, I like to have fun while lifting weights. It's, it's something great, it's something cool. And even though if we win, that's okay. If we don't win, that's still okay. I, I went you and I had fun. Others. Yeah, I, I went and have had fun. That's that's always my number one mantra. Have fun. 
One, yeah. one thing I've noticed about the CrossFit community, and I saw it, uh, was it two, three weeks ago in uh, the competition, was the community around it. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I follow a few CrossFitters on Instagram, and I realize there's a lot of support. It's not, when you go to g a normal gym, and no offense to my friends in gym, <laughs> everyone seems to have this thing of I'm competing against you all the time, yeah. and I can lift heavier weights, and I'm working out by myself with my coach. But you mm -hmm. seem to be a team. I see that teamwork. Is that something that you've, that's been drummed into? Mm. And, and I wish I asked Brian this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it something yeah. that is, is, is a mantra for CrossFit? Like, don't leave your brother behind yeah no one left behind yeah. leave, leave no one behind leave i like no the community behind. angle of it yeah it's it's true and it's you find that you you know everyone at the gym mm. because it's it's so we're so close together you can find someone who's better at this movement give you cues or try and jump higher that will help you get there and it's always like we're not com okay sometimes we do compete against each other but it's not like you are alone you feel like oh someone has your back and i think that's why i've been in crossfit for such a long time like three years is a long time in my books that when i noticed you do a lot of outdoor activities as well like you go mm -hmm. hiking and you go doing this because it's all about the different muscles that are being used what are your hopes and dreams for crossfit in this country um the more people will get into it mm. and the more people will get into it the more like the stakes will be higher and uh, people will get so much better because now competition is stiff and we'll have more boxes opening up in the country because um, some people maybe they don't have access and they live very far to the nearest CrossFit gym. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Collins, do you guys get any government support? Federation recognition? Is there even a CrossFit no. Federation? No. Nothing? No. We don't have a CrossFit Federation. Um, uh, we haven't gotten support. Like, with CrossFit, it's all about you and the community that kind of support each other um, in case you need to go out for a tournament or stuff like that, or even just creating awareness about CrossFit as a sport. Um, um, it has to be us doing it. We're not getting any outside support. Um, that's, that's a little unfortunate because yeah. it is a sport and heaven forbid you go and win trophies. Um, you've put Kenya's name out there, you yes. know? Yes, yeah. yeah. And somebody <laughs> should recognize that we have these athletes competing on an international stage. Yeah. Um, just competing, not even winning, competing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And putting the Kenyan flag. Do you know if there are any plans to have some sort of structured governance for the sport? Um, uh, already CrossFit itself, there's a way that it's governed from the headquarters um, and it trickles down to to the gyms I mean, in headquarters different countries. Headquarters in Kenya or... No, 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 no. Um, in the US. Okay. Yeah, but now in Kenya, hopefully, maybe, um, kind of create a fitness federation, I think, and then maybe CrossFit will kind of be engraved um, in there. I guess it's, it's food for thought. Yes. Um, especially now that you've gone for some competitions. Yeah. International competitions, still going for international still competitions. Still going for more, yeah. It, it, it is food for thought. Um, is that something you would like to see? Heck, you're going to run yeah. for chairman <laughs> of Kenya CrossFit Federation. <laughs> <laughs> uh? it, it, it would be great. Um, maybe if it's not to run like how the normal sports federations are run, mm. uh, maybe there's more transparency and they put the we athletes first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, that's, <laughs> that's like I, I would be a hundred percent behind mm. it if mm -hmm. if those those were the terms. Because then it would get into schools. Yes. Get yes. Into, and then you get True. to spread the sport oh yeah. yes, to every corner yeah. of the country. Definitely. Yeah. And create jobs. We like saying there are no well, jobs. <laughs> yeah. I always say the <laughs> sport <laughs> industry can potentially mm. employ hundreds of thousands of yes, people. Yes, it's very yeah. rich. You know, but everybody yeah. does it on the side. What, mm. what do you do in, in, not in real life? Oh. <laughs> What's your, in quotes, real job? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm a software engineer at Safaricom. Oh, okay. Um, yes. 
So if the signal goes down, I can. <laughs> 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 um, yes, I, I, I can talk to someone. That's the thing with Kenyan sports people. You yeah. all have to have another job. Yeah. Yet in other countries, your sport is your job. These and guys are full time. You. Like we, we compete. Like when we went to South Africa, we were mm. competing with full time athletes. This mm. past someone who wakes up, goes to the gym, works out, goes back home, sleeps, gets back to the gym. Now for us, now we have to coach software classes, engineers, to software engineers oh, yes. some yeah, <laughs> pilots and all this kind of stuff. But yet, they still want to compete with these top athletes. And we still make it to that level. So for me, I always say we're doing good. It shows um, the potential. Yeah, for us to get, like going to South Africa, it's not just you have to be fittest in Kenya. Mm. You have to be top 20 in the whole of Africa to make it to go to South Africa. Wow. And so we did that, beating a lot of gyms, the whole of Africa, when we made it to the top 20 and went for the semifinals in South Africa, competing versus like elite full-time athletes. You know, this, this, unfortunately, it's the story of our sports. Yeah. And I tell them it's the same thing in rugby. It's the same thing in... All these other sports, they go to yeah. work for nine hours a day, then um, they train, yes. then they compete against the best in the world, mm -hmm. and still get results. And still get results. But then that's, I mean, that's that's good on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think let's put this as a start of getting you guys out there. Mm -hmm. More media, you need more media, more true, media, more true. media. Yeah. Um, we need to support you when you go out there and uh, celebrate when you bring something back. We will. Yes. But celebrate uh, either way. <laughs> yes, either way. It's about the growth. One yeah. day we will. Yes, it's, it's about, about the growth. growth. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think yeah. as Brian said, we are, Kenya is what? We're 10, 50, 10 years into Something CrossFit. Like, yeah. Other yeah. countries are 20 years into CrossFit and yeah. doing it full time. In yeah. terms of competition, we're mm. just like four years. So we're still very, wow. we're toddlers. We're still, we're still very young. young. Very young. Yeah. The sky is the limit. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on the show. Thanks a lot Thank for, you having for having us. us. Boy and of course yeah. Brian uh, hey. Swenson. Swenson. Brian of First Power Gym. <laughs> 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 for being on the show today. And yeah. I wish you guys all the best. Thank um, you. Next weekend you'll be in Cairo as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Go and represent the ladies. Okay. And uh, yeah. we'll try and see if you there's any money out there that uh, people will respond and actually support the team. That would be great. Because that's what we yeah. need. Yeah. We need the money, yeah. but we also need the support, the fans Yeah, we support. need the support. Yeah. Yeah. And if someone wants to come and join CrossFit, they come to Galleria. Let you them come us. to Galleria of um, Langata or Magadi Road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you'll find <laughs> some very great coaches that um, will be there to train you and uh, help you achieve your fitness goals. Even with my broken ankle? Even oh with yes. your... We, we have people, for me. we are. If we have every... We scale everything, so... Okay. There's a, yeah, there's a place for you. Trust them more than yeah. trust. <laughs> there's, there's a but place for everyone. But I told you, everyone. we modify movements yes. based on your fitness <laughs> no, level. So, I'm yeah. I, I'm, yeah. By the way, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, hopefully you'll see me there soon. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching Red Bull Life. I hope yeah. you've enjoyed the show. I hope you yeah. go down to Fast Power Gym or any of the CrossFit gyms and get uh, involved in the sport. Yeah. I saw it last time. It's hard, but it's fun. Yes. It's yeah. fun and uh, it, it's an option for those of you who want to get fit, keep fit and have fun. Um, yeah. I hope you'll join us again next week on Red Bull Life. Bye-bye.